PowerPoint ready. Got our models here that the doctor's gonna show. <clears throat> the bags. Everyone eating the food. Yes, everyone eating the food when they're not supposed to. We have to make sure it's safe for our patients. Mm hmm. It's not safe. Zoe's welcome sign, pretty cute. <laughs> and don't forget, yeah, Manya yeah. has flowers. Beautiful flowers, actually. Do you guys have any concern or any specific things that you want me to talk about? I just want to find out about how the implant procedure works. You, do, you know how you do the implants. And if you do implants that are partial for uh, denture, you can do the denture part, denture part implants. Or if That's a good question. Yeah. Anything else? So I'm going to start a small presentation. Um, please stop me anytime, ask me a question. Okay. I want to start with saying this, Blend. your best imp is your own tooth. So first, we want to try to preserve your teeth as much as we can. There's nothing we have today that would replace, come on in. <laughs> so there, there's nothing we have today that would replace 100% everything is just God-given truth. But I'm very excited because implant come in very close. And we are on cutting edge. There's a lot of things going on. I know myself, I traveled to Germany to learn about bioengineering and what implant can do for us. So, Why should we preserve our teeth? And what's happened when we lose our teeth? So I have this video. To show our lower jaw and what's happened when we lose the teeth. There's part of the bone that gets to lose our teeth. So how is that gonna affect us? We age much faster. We lose our facial height. And we don't realize it. It's happening slowly. happen also when we lose that vertical height. We lose our smile because we start having that reverse smile. And so, and so when we smile, smiles go up, now it's going downward. So some of my patients tell me, oh, we can't, that video is for somebody who lost all of the teeth. What's, what's happened if we lose one tooth? with one tube. So we lost that tube. Now we want to chew. We start chewing on that area. Then we get a sore gum. After that we start avoiding eating on this side. We start eating more and more on the other side. We end up loading that left side much more than is designed to hold. Then we get more problem on the other side. Time pass. Then we get that drift of the lower teeth and the shift on the top teeth. 
that will change the natures of the contact between the teeth and the physiology of chewing. Now we start getting cut, food cut between, and we end up with too many cavities, all because one missing tooth. When we think about cavities, when we think about periodontal disease, they are infection. They cause by bacteria. But the good news, we can prevent those. And I would go back to we should take care of our teeth as much as we can. But even if we do, we still have accident, still have trauma, still have abrasion. We still have genetically missing teeth that we want to replace. Sometimes that's not fair, because sometimes it's not our fault that we lost teeth. Sometimes we didn't get the knowledge, the information. We didn't get the care that we deserve. So it's affect our health, affect our appearance, and many more change our life. I always hear my patients tell me I don't enjoy my steak anymore. I love me. I want to cut that steak. Or that apple that I used to have every morning. And your skin will begin to wrinkle, especially in the areas around your mouth and neck. Dental implants can help prevent jawbone loss and preserve those facial contours. Even with a great smile, missing teeth, if not replaced, can lead to additional dental problems. Now your teeth can shift, making it difficult to keep them clean. Over time, gum disease and bone loss can occur, shrinking the foundation for tooth support, which can put you at risk of losing additional teeth. A shrinking jawbone ultimately changes the shape of your face. Your mouth and jaw will appear to collapse. Your lips will appear thinner, and your skin will begin to wrinkle, especially in the areas around your mouth and neck. Dental implants can help prevent jawbone loss and preserve those facial contours. Even with a great smile. So dental implant can do that for us. It's preservable. I think that's the biggest plus. This is one of our patients. And to get from here to here is the important journey. But it's possible. So we have enamel, natural crown, bone, gum, root. And what's make implants so special? That for the first time we have a restoration very, very similar to the tooth, to natural tooth. Feel like a tooth. We can chew very close to how we chew with our teeth. That's what's make me very excited about implants. In the end, just to be happy, that's what we want. And if missing teeth causing us to be not happy, dental implant is great now. It's one of the most predictable treatment that we do. Now every patient is different. This could be one missing tooth. This could be multiple. This could be all the teeth missing. So this is what we used to do for one missing tooth. Doing a partial. Or we doing a bridge where we cut two version teeth to have a bridge that will last us five years. 
but today we can have that implant place. We're going to preserve the two adjacent teeth. We're not going to touch them. So this is a wonderful patient of mine. She came in and she had that partials on the top. You can see that partial. And here's without the partial. And you can see the damage that the partial's done over the years. Lost a lot of bone because we loaded, loading the tissue. You can see the recession on this too. Now again, the journey between here to get here, naturally looking restoration. Took a lot, we did the graft, we have to correct that defect. But today is possible, even with the most complicated cases. This is advanced case, we have to get a block of bone from the patient's jaw and graft that area. But the end result, Priceless. What if we had multiple missing teeth? We used to do bigger partial. Bigger partial come with bigger problems. Or longer bridge, cutting more teeth. Now we cut four teeth instead of two to have that longer bridge. We dumped those, and they were okay then. But I don't think they are okay today, because we have a better option. We really do. And those teeth that you'd be cutting could be healthy teeth, right? Completely healthy. So we'd be preserving them? Absolutely right. Again, this is one of our patients. Where she has multiple missing teeth. And you can see the implant in place. Then we have a bridge. Then crowns over the bridge. She's very happy. We didn't have to touch anything. Actually, for her, there is no other option but to have a big partial that will always fall every time she speak, or when she smile, or when she do business, or when she even go for dinner with friends. We used to get our patients a complete dentition. Now, there is a research paper came in Canada, I think four years ago, and they say the standard of care now, at least to get two implant, or one, even one, for the patient, then the bone is going to go away. Now, that tension will never fit again. Even if we try a lot to make a new denture, a better fitting, now the denture thicker, heavier, Patient not used to it. I know a lot of dentists stop doing denture because they feel they couldn't help their patient. Patient never happy. I know patient they have bags of dentures. They move around to do his denture. And they go from dentist to dentist. They try to get that perfect denture that doesn't exist. But again, we have now a solution. We can have those implant. We can have one, we can have two. We'll help the patient. We can have a complete denture or prosthetic over implant. We can go denture. Now we're doing over denture. We're doing denture with bar. We're doing a bridge over implant. All those options is available now. So 
So multiple T. Again, we can have bridge that over M. <coughs> but you can see here <coughs> the bone loss. So all starts here. Making a decision to do something better for ourselves. And start with making a phone call or talking with Zoe or Crystal, Yasmin, and Liza. Start today, not tomorrow. Making that commitment that I want to get something better for myself. I am unique, so my treatment plan is unique. It's different. So we're proud in our office that we built our treatment plan based on the patient's goal. It's not about us. It's about you. What do you want for yourself? We are here to help you, educate you, and give you information. And we really believe the patients know more, that will make a better decision. That's why we start offering these seminars. We get to the surgery, we get to the restoration. But very important to follow through with the RICO and maintenance. Make your implant last. Make that commitment for lifelong healthy smile. And we need to work together, dental office and patient. What kind of treatment is the right for me? Again, it's based on your goal. What's the contraindication to do the treatment? You know, we used to say, that slide is all, that's for example, smoker are not good candidate for implant. Actually, today we're comfortable placing implant on even a smoker when they follow an instruction. When they're willing to accept a little bit less or more or less, more risk. But again, there's some medical problem that might prevent the surgery. So it could be not right for you. I would say always to my patient, it's not right for you now. Let's get you to your physician. Let's see what we can do to get your diabetes control, to get your blood pressures control. Then probably we'll be okay. So dental implant for everyone. We have a lot of technology in our office. A technology I brought from France by collecting blood from our patient and use growth factor. We have a tomo machine that we can know the width of the bone for the patient that we do here in the practice. So you would be using their own bone to put in their milk? Sometimes we can. Yes, we have too many options for the bone. If we need the bone, we have a smaller implant, we have a shorter implant. As many times, grafting is not needed. Depend on your goal, what you want. But we have the option of using your own bone, even using synthetic bone. We get a lot of options available today. Even with the cases that were impossible, we thought they were impossible to do with dental implant. Today they are possible. And what about with the growth factor? What does that do? Thank you for your question. Growth factors is naturally exist in our body. What we do, we collect some of your blood, just a small tube or two. Then we centrifuge this blood and we collect the growth factor. Fact that it's kind of help you heal faster. We found amazing great results. So surgery become a routine for us in our practice. 
even for the patient. Many times I don't even use a painkiller for the patient who gets implanted. I decided to use two pictures of me because I do my own implant and I restore them. But you could already have your own dentist that who don't place implant. We would be happy to help them and guide them to get those implants for them and help restore those implants. But also we need a communication between two dentists. Sometimes they are one, like in my case. And also, we have a ceramics that they will do the prosthetic work for us. So communication is a key. We proud to use originals materials, a material that we've been supported with by this company right here, Snowbell Biocare, one of the first and leading company with data implants. And we never use many implant. We use dental implant. So be careful. It's not the same. Can we have implant with partial? Yes, we can. My question is why? And if they go, you will be satisfied with the result. Well, if you have a full denture, bottom and top. Okay. You'd have to have an implant for each tooth? No. No, we don't need to. Um, we can go as minimal as two. Even sometimes on the lower, we use only one. And that implant will hold the denture in place? That's a good question. When we go down to one implant, it's going to help keeping the implant in the, in the front. But you're still going to load the part the posterior part when you chew in the back. So it does help, but won't give you um, completely supported restoration. So when you get a bite and chew, you're going to load the bone in the back area. And you're going to load only one implant. And if you um, think about it, denture is like a horseshoe. So if it's supported only from one area, and you eat on the side, it's still you're gonna load that bone. But it is make difference for our patient. So we like two for the lower when we do over tension. Never. No. We can have a complete bridge on the lower with six implant. Same thing for the top. We only need six implant to get a full bridge. If we do an over denture, so denture does go on top of the implant, we can go with two, we can go with four. And there is no right and wrong. More implant, necess not necessary, more satisfaction from our patient. But so sometimes when we lose a lot and we want to do a big bridge and place a lot of implant, sometimes harder to achieve aesthetic because we lost the gum. Also, loss of tissue, sometimes denture over implant would be a better option. So there is a study we done, some of my colleagues. So I think it's where always they, the right treatments come in from the patient to achieve the patient's goal. So if your goal is to not to feel it, to feel more like teeth when you chew, probably a whole bridge is a better option. If you want to improve your denture situation, you, you don't want it to fall off, you're okay with it, you were happy with the denture for a while, because now you've got more bone loss, your denture is not stable like before, then it's okay to just add some. So there is no right and wrong. Uh, we are not here, we want you to necessarily have more implant. We want the minimum numbers of the procedure that to achieve your goal. Did I answer your question? Good. So this is the video with the testimonial of our patient. I invite you to listen to it. 
If you have any question, I can answer the question at the same time. My name is Jim Susu, and I've been a patient here since uh, June 25th. It is now February 19th. And um, I have had a few. Uh, I first came uh, when I did on to a hit of a piece and broke one of my teeth. And I had to come. I had gone up through this money in the dentist. And I came here. And through that process, I've had uh, a lot of work done because I had birth defect and lots of different dental work in the past. And then needing to fix some of the mistakes of the past. And one of those was an implant. And I now have uh, temporary teeth on the front. Um, but the, the goal is to have this whole front section done with uh, another two implants. I have one. And so far, um, it's been good to be able to have a regular smile, or more regular than I've ever had. Uh, and uh, so. It's going to be a long process because I did have so many other uh, problems uh, from, since I was a little kid. Um, but uh, the goal will be when all is said and done, it will look like this and even a little bit better when it's all permanent. But I am happy with how it is now. So uh, I guess that's it. Or is that, is that yeah. <laughs>
Are those all your patients? Yes. Okay. Yes. All, all the video that you see, all the patient in that video, our own patient. Um, all the cases that I show, they are our own patient. Um, I want to mention that the power, the PowerPoint um, presentation um, is uh, from the company that we use their own implant. I don't have any financial interest or association with that company. But they were kind to help us get us a nice frame PowerPoint to help us with this educational event. Thank you for the hands of applaud. I think you deserve it more than anything being here, taking time to learn more. Um, I want you to know this is just, um, there's, I don't want you to feel obligated or anything, to do anything. I want you to learn. Um, I want you to share this event with, you know, with, the, with your friends in the community. Uh, we wanna, we're gonna offer this seminars on bi-monthly. Um, you will come to come again. We just want to help the community know more about this cutting edge technology that's available today and it's very affordable. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just have one sure. So how long does an, like properly taken care of, how long can an implant last? Um, we, the implant part that's going inside the bone could last you a lifelong. Um, we have implant, the cases that we see now, it's been serving in the patient's mouth for 50 years. Um, now the part that's going inside your mouth, um, that's a crown or abutment, um, could fracture, could break, it's need the maintenance, need work. Um, Ca uh, cavity don't get the implant, so that's a great advantage. I think we don't get cavity on titanium, but we do still get periodontal disease around implants, so you need to stay on top of your cleaning, you need to brush and floss at home, so it take care of you as long as you take care of the implant. But I can say it's one of the most predictable procedures that we do in dentistry, and the success rate is 98% for the implant. So that's really, really high. We don't have anything in dentistry with success rate 98, but dental implant integration. So. But if, doctor, there is a possibility of you rejecting, your mouth rejecting these implants? I would say this is, there's a few cases out of millions of implants already in place. We're not sure why it's rejected. Most of the time it's infection, it's not a rejection. Mm -hmm. So there are some infections happen and then the implant fall off in a couple of days. Um, that was infection most of the time. Um, titanium is biologically very acceptable by the body. Dr. Brandon Mark, who is the inventor of root shape dental implant, um, who passed away just last year, he's an orthopedic surgeon. Um, he used to plant titanium inside live tissue and he can see the red cells go and just don't mind laying on that. So it's, it's really acceptable by the body. Oh. Um, we, we have a lot of new material that's promising too, like a zirconia as an implant. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of innovation. Um, but um, I think it's mostly the rejection or what's been called rejection was an infection. Mm. I can tell you with all the implants that I place, um, all they working in the patient's mouth today. What is, what is a, an implant cost for a patient to have an implant put in? There's, I want to make sure that um, we know the part of the implant. There's part that's going inside the bone, which we call dental insert or dental implant. There's abutment part is going up and there is a crown that's going up. Um, so the cost of um, these to replace one tooth or to, to go in this, on the top of denture is different, depend how many parts we use and how much it take to get that implant placed. So the complexity increase the price, simplicity decrease the price, so to be a fair um, in, in coating this, 
This can go between 1,700 to so 10,000. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you what we charge in our community. We charge 60% less than our um, other dentists in the community. 60% less. Did I answer your question? I tried the best I can to answer yeah, your question. Yeah, it also depends on what you need done. Like if you have to have bone added, exactly. it's going to cost more. Exactly. Yeah. And how much we need to increase? Are we just going to add a little bit? Or right. like our patient here, we have to take a whole block of bone to place it. We need to craft tissue. So the more complexity, the more you know, works need to be done. And the more also what you want to achieve um, I show one cases where the patient just want the implant in the bridge. They didn't care about the gum, how it looked, they want a function. So this is what's much more affordable than to have more aesthetic where we have to build the bone, we have to build the tissue, then to place the implant to, to provisionalize. So the more steps that go in, um, the more chart will be. But I think is now compared to um, having a bridge done, for example, it's about the same price like having a bridge, but you can get much more advantage from the dental plant. What about financing? Do you take dental insurance? Or? Yes, we help our patient with, with dental insurance. I think we use a lot of dental insurance to help maintain and maybe getting the crown on it up. Um, but every insurance is different. We try to maximize your benefit with the insurance. I think they are way to keep and maintain the implant. Um, but there's going to be some that's not covered, and we got to be responsible for this. So our prices is very fair. We don't want to, um, we don't want to undercharge because that won't be fair for us. We don't want to overcharge because we feel this is becoming more and more and more affordable, and we have the technology. We know more information so today than five years ago. So the risk is less. So we've been charging more, uh, less with the time. And I expect this price will go down too. Thank you. If, it's, if the implant is covered on the insurance, do you have like a payment plan? Or yes, that's a good question. Yes, we have a care credit that you can start your treatment today and pay no interest with that. Um, with that financial option, then you can make a payment that's fit your budget and you can go up to, I think, long time. I'm not sure, but we'll be happy to go one by one with you and find the right you know, amount that you want to pay monthly and then we choose the best financial plan that's worked for you and for your budget. Good question. Any other questions? Anything you guys would like to add? Well, I have a question. Like, I know um, I've been told that I have like fourteen thousand dollars worth of implants and work that needs to be done for me to have a functional mouth. And what if you can't afford fourteen thousand dollars or get a loan for fourteen thousand dollars? What do you do then? And you know you need the work, and nobody wants to help because they don't want to give you credit. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot of patients just like you. And what we did, we phased the treatment based on their budget. And we cannot phase treatment if we don't, we're not ready. I think that would be not responsible to start treatment if we're going to stress you know, any patient's financial situation. But if there is a budget, acceptable budget, to move forward, we can do steps to improve the situation and eventually get you what you want. When my patient asks me, you know, what can I do with this amount of money? I first ask them, what do you want for yourself in the end? Because it's not about the money. I think it's about your goal. Once you have a goal, then we can work together how to afford that treatment plan that you want, um, how to um, make payment, where to prioritize, 
where to spend that money that you have now? Is that possible to achieve that goal? Knowing your financial situation? So sometimes if we have, if we like something and we want to get it, then we go and buy something different. Usually we're not happy because that's what, not what we want. So if you like that dress that you've been dreaming about for a long time, then you go and then you find that dress is more than you can afford. You're not going to buy just another dress to make your dream come true. That won't work. Maybe we should wait. Maybe we should keep our health now and do the best we can. Get on prevention. Make our teeth now last until we're more ready to move with the right treatment for you. So I want you, I want you to know you're not the only one in this situation. All of my patients, the same one. And we help a lot of our patients get the treatment done. And a lot of them, they work hard to get that done, but they are happy. I don't want you to move forward until you're already. But we got to do some step to keep the health. Now, just because I'm not ready now, I'm not gonna get something less than what I deserve or what I want. So, but we can do step to, to lay down the foundation for what we want in the end. So it's based on our goal, what we want to have for ourselves. And we got to be ready. So what do you do first? Do you do a consult? Yes, yes. And we we happy today to to go one on one and answer maybe more private questions that you might have. If you want to take advantage of this, we want to start taking some tomography, which is some specific X-ray that's going to be uh, complementary. Uh, and you can use it. I don't want you to move with the treatment just because you got this free you know, consultation today. We can keep it for you. We can transfer it. It's yours. It's our gift from us to you to whenever you're ready to move for the treatment or even if you want to choose somebody else, a dentist, to restore that. And that dentist need help from us placing that complaint. We will be happy to do that. Do you do extraction or double? Yes. A lot of our implant now, we remove the tooth and place the implant at the same time to save one surgery. It's become more predictable procedure. So many times we want to pull the tooth and place the implant at the same time. We used to do more steps. We used to graft, wait, come back, place implant, wait, come back, they see the abutment, wait, come back, put provisional, wait, come back, place, that was, final. That's what I was going to ask. What yes. Is the time frame between extraction and yes. implant? You know, with information, um, we're using the right implant. That this experienced dentist can get enough stability, what we call initial torque and stability, that we can go right away for healing abutment. And it's been two years. I never go for you know cover screw, so I I do one stage surgery because we know it's work and I save my patient one surgery. So I want to move forward. If I get that torque, I want to let my implant sleep. Many times we still need to. We want to do the best for the patient. If we can, we want to move forward with that. Good question. Yes? Okay. Anybody like to take advantage of our gift today? Yes? <laughs> Please. Awesome. Okay. Anyone who wants to do the x-rays, I'll go ahead and take your paperwork. It's going to be uh, probably a couple of minutes.